What prompted me to bring together this group of artists for the narrative dish, um, there's quite a few things actually. These, a lot of these women are friends of mine and, and whose work I've collected over the years. Um, I've worked um, sort of in close proximity to some of them in the past couple of years. I think Canada's got this incredibly vibrant contemporary emerging artist scene, and uh, um, both men and women. Um, but a lot of the women that I know, I mean, they're raising families and they're doing all these other things alongside and it's sometimes they're not getting as much exposure out there and they're not getting as many shows. And so these were people whose work I absolutely adored and I just thought they, you know, I want to get more of this stuff out in front of the public and get the public seeing this kind of stuff. And I also wanted to bring together, Canada sort of has this divide as soon as you hit Manitoba. And, you know, one side of the country knows what's going on in terms of clay and the other side knows something different. And, and so it was nice to bring in, although Mariko used to live on our side of the country, she now lives over in Halifax. And so bringing in people from a range of different places and bringing them to Saskatchewan. And Saskatchewan often showcases the wonderful, excellent work that exists here, but sometimes it's really refreshing to see what else is going on in the country so that we can contextualize ourselves and what we're making here in relation to that larger picture. I think it was the tactile nature of clay. It's more hands-on than any other craft medium, I guess, I had tried out before. I did a little bit of stained glass, sewing and stuff like that, but there was something about the hands-on quality of working with clay that I was really drawn to. And before I went to art school, I took a wheel throwing class um, in Ontario, where I grew up, and the wheel, is also something, there's something so special about working on the wheel, um, something really meditative about it. I do a lot of wheel thrown stuff and I work on the, on the wheel all the time. I still feel like I'm always totally engaged in it and it's never become boring and I haven't even really feel, I don't even really feel like I've totally mastered it, which is kind of what keeps me at it. What attracted me to clay as a medium uh, was the tactility of it. And I still remember my first class where I had taken it just as uh, a kind of outlet and a kind of a creative um, endeavor that wasn't associated with my art making at the time and literally fell in love with it the first time I, I tried it. Um, and I think going from somebody who worked on 2D surfaces, um, it, to be able to suddenly use something as tactile and physical as, as clay, it really uh, attracted themselves to me. Ceramic specifically, I started when I was in college. Um, and I've, leading up to the taking a ceramics course, I really thought I was going to be a painter. I'd only ever done 2D work. And um, suddenly I was thrown into the ceramics class, and I kind of thought of it as Oh, basket weaving 101, it's going to be boring. And within about two weeks, I was completely hooked. And I never looked back, and I don't paint much anymore or anything. And I had Jack Suarez and Ruth Chambers as my two first profs, and I think they were really instrumental in just you know, showing the boundaries. One, Ruth was very conceptually based, and Jack was very practical, functional um, techniques, glazing, all that kind of stuff. So I sort of saw the whole gambit of what was possible with ceramics, and, and I fell in love immediately. There's always been a narrative element to my ceramic work, but I think it's come up in a lot of, it's come up in totally different ways at different times. I've used lots of imagery and um, taking images from textbooks and, and then adding different layers of pattern and texture, which has sort of given them a narrative quality, I think. The kitchen quilt, these plates that I made for this narrative narrative show. I'd never really made any work that was that was as personal as this and this so this was drawing directly from my own history, my own Mennonite history. And so I feel like it's probably the narrative part of it is different than the rest of the work in the show, but for me that was that's kind of what I wanted to explore. And um, and then the quilts the, what is, has always drawn me to quilts is the narrative qualities of the quilts and where the different fabrics came from and, and the women behind it and the emotional energy and everything that was poured into these quilts and the, obviously the fabrics, the, the stories and like 
I grew up with quilts and like different squares, different fabrics of like wedding dresses and of shirts from brothers, uncles, my grandpa, whatever. And so that was, so quilts have always had this really strong narrative component to them. And so it just seemed like a good fit to do quilt plates. And then also I did the, the Bents project. I don't know if you remember that, but when I lived in Saskatchewan um, a few years ago, I did a project. I made souvenir cups for a ghost town. And I think that had a totally different narrative element to it. And that was, the, I mean, the stories behind the ghost town and what had happened there and the history of the people there and the history of that place and then making work that kind of responded to that um, was also had a narrative quality to it, and, but in a really different way. So, yeah, but I think that anything handmade could be, there's, there's a story behind anything that's handmade. And so really, a narrative dish could be, is almost any handmade <laughs> dish in a way. I think my work, whether it be uh, on paper or ceramics, has always had an element of narrative to it. And certainly, since I started working in clay, my first uh, kind of instinct was to somehow incorporate narrative into my pieces. Uh, I really enjoy communicating with an audience through imagery and, and themes, and I, I enjoy incorporating stories and narratives into all my work. And I think uh, ceramics just gave me a different way of doing that. So since the beginning, I've had kind of different ways of, of doing that. Uh, when I see how this exhibition came together, I think it, it does change the way I, I see my work. It, it kind of frames it within this larger effort and movement. And uh, it's really interesting to see the variety of approaches that everyone in this show has used and, and to also see the kind of common ways of addressing image and addressing narrative. Uh, I think all the work shares um, a certain sensitivity of, of touch and approach and all the work, you know, what unifies it is that it's imbued with a lot of personal meaning to the makers and that it's being used to, to tell these stories. So it does feel good to, to see my work with others that are like-minded and, and making similar efforts. Narrative has always, well, for about the last 10 years, been a really integral part of my practice. When I was a grad student, I started making a figurative body of work as well as a functional body of work. And, and both were very incredibly different, but both, in my mind, were actually just two different answers to the same question. Um, and I had a friend back in grad school who, who at one point said something to me about the figurative work about how, you know, I needed to really find myself in the work and put myself in the work to make myself vulnerable um, so that the audience had a way, sort of this other doorway into the work because there was a human behind it and that human story. So at that point, I sort of switched what I was doing and really started bringing in my own personal narrative. So I would be talking about things, larger picture things about problems in the world, over consumption, war, environmental issues, all that kind of stuff, but from my perspective as this sort of first world consumer, right? And so always having that in there. And then when I started making functional work, like what's in the show, was after I had children and I started making dishes for them so that they would have these beautiful things that they could interact with that were special to them um, so that they would start to understand, you know, where objects come from and, and question where, you know, some of the other objects in their lives come from, um, you know, whether it be from another maker or from, you know, a child laborer in another country, all those sorts of questions. Um, so a lot of the narratives that have come into both bodies of work for me are very personal, incredibly personal. A lot of them, um, since having kids, are very much about motherhood um, and about, you know, mother guilt, um, how to ethically raise your children in the world we live in now, you know, being you know, just a good ethical example for your kids in terms of what they should live and how we can make, you know, look at all of our feelings and how do we make them better. And so the functional work that I do, it seems cutesy and it is cutesy. I mean, there's cats and there's, you know, rainbows and whatever. Um, 
but a lot of it to me is it's very personal narratives and it's about um, finding happiness and believing in beautiful things in the world and actually striving to make those things happen um, and not just sort of taking them for granted. Yeah, it just works really well together. I was a little concerned that everybody was going to be doing plates because plates are a really nice surface to work with, especially if you're doing illustration. And I expected that there would be a lot of illustration here, but um, I like that there's I like that there's lots of different lots of different work and lots of different interpretations of that theme. 